After a bit of an incident where the camera fell over and the focus stopped working, so <laughs> you know, as I said, you know, anything that can and usually does go wrong, anything that can go wrong usually does go wrong, so that's usually the way it is. Uh, it's just about uh, seven and a half hours later uh, after I got up, so I got up around uh, midnight, it's now about 7 20, so let me give it the time and date stamp. It's Saturday. Friday was the April first, so Saturday is April second. So it is seven hours and twenty-two minutes into the day of uh, Saturday, April second, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Well, as I said, with all with with any progress, there's always setbacks, and this is no exception here. There were some setbacks uh, because, uh, well. Basically, the camera fell over. As I was doing one of the video shot tests, the uh, I accidentally tripped over the camera wire, and, and well, yeah. And so this camera got a little, a little dinged up, but not bad. The focus wasn't working for a bit, but now it's working again. So, uh, hopefully, things will be all right tomorrow. Uh, so, well, not tomorrow, but the next time I get up, because I'm gonna get up in a few, uh, probably around noon. I I've been mulling it over to maybe go food shopping and get a little ahead so that I don't when I when I go on Wednesday I don't have to carry as much back. Uh, this is, the whole issue has to do with load distribution, and I don't want to be carrying as much as I've been carrying back. I want to reduce the load a little bit. That means that I'm going to have to do an extra walk, one extra walk a week. So rather than going out once a week, I'll go out twice a week, and that will allow me to just sort of. Uh, Distribute the load, and, and I won't be carrying as much back. So uh, that's how I'll end up doing things. So this is going to be an interesting uh, uh, outcome. I'm using a little different lighting setup, uh, and this allows me will allow me to sort of vlog more immediately out of bed. So and actually vlogging now just prior to going to bed. So. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, I think uh, I will be filming uh, uh, after I do my walk. Look, I'll do. Uh, I'll get up, make my assessments about walking, and then from there, uh, make the decision from there whether I'm going to walk or not. Uh, and if I do walk, I'll do the filming when I come back. And if I don't walk, then. I'll do the filming uh, almost immediately. I'll do the first episode of uh, Tweetline Plus, and I'll probably do uh, the first episode of uh, Living the Kawhi Life. So we'll see how that ends up working out. Anyways, uh, that's about it for now. And I will see you in the next segment of the Big, uh, Big Bang Theory Rails BTS vlog. All right, take it easy. Hey, everybody. Although, it's not actually morning. <laughs> As you sort of come to expect with uh, this vlog, morning is not always morning. Sometimes it's uh, in the evening, sometimes it's in the middle of the night. Ugh. And right now it's about quarter past 11 uh, in the evening, just about uh, 45 minutes away from midnight. So, yeah, I'm getting up. Uh, I have to eat. I'm, I'm uh, hungry again. Uh, I'm starting to relax more. I took most of the day off. So, well, <laughs> I slept a, lar a larger chunk of the day than I normally did, than I normally do. So let's put it that way. So that's that's my time off. Uh, when I get extra sleep, then yay, that's vacation time. 
yeah. <laughs> I guess you can say I, I like what I do. So. Oh. Yesterday it made me realize the uh, the tipping over the camera and the problem is getting it back working again. Makes me realize I need to get a backup camera for the vlog. So that's um that that's next on the to do list. Well, it's not in terms of see I, I always look for it first. I always uh, put a, put a notice on my um, on my system that I have to get something and I look for. It usually takes me about two weeks to find something good at a good price and uh, then they go from, that's how I found this camera here the, this camera here I got it from a uh, refurbished place uh, it was like I think a uh, hundred and twenty dollars something like that so it was for the time it was a good deal uh, so now I gotta look for something else that's along similar along lines between a hundred hundred and hundred twenty dollars uh, and that will sort of get me uh, to where I need to be in terms of having a backup camera Oh, yeah. I almost, almost, see, I almost forgot this. Let me give you a time and date stamp. Uh, you know, while well, it's in my mind, it's uh, twenty three hours and sixteen minutes into the day. It's a Saturday still. Friday was uh, 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 the first, so it's still the second. So it's uh, fr uh, Saturday, August second. Uh, August, April second. Uh, 2016. So, yeah. Oh, when you don't pay attention to things, when the mind is kind of gone, it's it's hard to focus. And this is certainly not you know, I've made mistakes like this before. This is, this was the issue. I was tired yesterday. I was doing the uh, uh, setup for the camera for the, for uh, for the for the new studio shots that I'm going to be doing like for. Uh, uh, be Big Bang Theory or else, uh, Kawhi Life, uh, Living the Kawhi Life is going to be filmed with that. Uh, Tweet Lines Plus is going to be full, uh, Tweet Line Plus is going to be filled with that, filmed with that. So, I was setting it up, I didn't carefully, I didn't, wasn't careful of how I put the, the camera, this camera, to the side. Because I was tired of just going through the motions. And didn't see it, backed into it, knocked it over. And I thought for a minute that that was it for the camera, but uh, thank God it came back. <laughs> it seems to have, seems to have, uh, ha now have a second life. Oh. But it wasn't fun seeing the, when you open the when I turned the camera on and I turned the screen on that it wasn't focusing. <laughs> it wasn't a fun moment. Uh, so, anyways, uh, I'm gonna have something to eat now. I am starved. Uh, and then I, I don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Uh, so I, sh I, could, I could be up for four hours. I could be up for less than that. Depends on how tired I feel. I do have to go to church in the morning. So I'm, I'm going to try to vlog uh, my way out. Uh, I'm not going to bring the camera there yet. Uh, I'm not too sure how this is actually working. So I'm going to give it another day uh, uh, sort of resting. And then I'll bring the uh, camera out. Another week or so, another week or so of resting and see if it goes how how things go for the rest of the week. If things go well for the for the rest of the week, then next week uh, you'll come to church and you'll sort of see what's going on behind the scenes there. Oh, so anyways, I will see you in the next segment. everybody <laughs> I think it's gonna be a good morning I got up to do uh, little things and I noticed I woke up decided to get up in mill about for a bit and then I decided to stay up so that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have a little something to eat and then we'll take it from there anyway is our time and date stamp before we forget. Uh, let's see. It is 2 hours and 44 minutes into the day of Monday. Uh, April 4th, 2016. Yeah, I have to think of these dates. <laughs> Sometimes, even, even when I've just looked at the dates, right? 
within a few minutes I would have forgotten it. It really depends on uh, you. It's not necessarily that that the dates that your memory is sort of failing, which does happen when, as fatigue where it goes on. The physiology of fatigue is that you know there is a degree of memory loss, uh, and it's it's not necessarily that that you forget who people are. It's not the it's not the, the those things. and not the long term things. It's the immediate is the immediate uh, memory. There's uh, immediate memory and there's long term memory. There's uh, immediate memory is like remembering remembering what day it is today. You know, you looked at your watch or you looked at your ca uh, calendar and said, okay, it's the fourth today. And then maybe ten minutes later, because you're doing other things, or your mind is focused on something else, that immediate uh, uh, remembrance of the date uh, of the fourth goes out of your mind because it's not being focused on. It's, 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 it hasn't been focused on enough to become a, a more permanent part of your memory. So, uh, And because the memory views it as low priority, it dumps it. And so later on, <laughs> let's go back. Now, what was that date again? And that's sort of the situation that that, it, that that exists here. And the one thing I like to say is, you know, when you're watching these vlogs, well, this, this vlog particularly, is you're seeing not the research, but you're seeing behind the scenes of the research. Uh, what does it take to do what I'm doing? You see that there's long hours. You see that there's almost no night and day. Uh, so you see that there's going to be a physiological effect to this, and you're seeing what you're seeing right now is you're seeing the physiological effect. And that's why nothing's edited out. You know, I have facial things here. I have ticks. I have scratches. I have this. I have that. Yeah, that's all part of it. That's that's this is part of the uh, this is part of the uh, of the result of long hours, being awake at three o'clock in the morning, getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Right? Sometimes I'm getting up at noon. Sometimes I'm getting up at, at, at 5 o'clock in the evening. Sometimes I'm getting up at 7 o'clock in the evening. If, if you watch enough of the vlogs, you know that there's no set time I'm getting up. And again, this... Anyone who knows anything about the health, where, you know, just to know a little bit about health, knows that sleep is important. That, it, it, it's, that if you start losing sleep, or your sleep cycle starts to go off, then it's going to have an effect. And this is the physiological effect. It has an effect on your behavior. It has an effect on a variety of different things, and this is no. This is certainly uh, no exception here. And because this is a scientific vlog, where nothing is edited out, and this is a scientific vlogs, and a vlog is a video log. It's just like a scientific journal, although it's done on video. Uh, you don't edit things out. That's some the way it is. Other things are going to be edited out, but uh, other, you know the shows are going to be edited out. But the vlog itself, which is which is also a show, is not going to be edited because why? You want to keep the raw information in there. These are the notes. These are the raw notes that that, that most people uh, never see in a scientist. They never see the raw notes of, that the scientist produces. And this is it. This this is the raw stuff. This is the raw living. This is the raw information, unedited. And in many ways, it's actually good to have this up. People say, oh, don't put your, look, put your stuff like that out, th out, th out there on the internet. Your enemy is going to come and get to use it on you. Well, good. Because in order to be an objective scientist, you need to have that information out there. The more of your information is out there, when they go back, back and back check, back check with them, what are they going to see? They're going to see the fatigue. They're going to see the uh, physiological effects of fatigue. They're going to see that the, the, the research is being done all hours, and that it does take a fair chunk of time to get a proper amount of research done. I mean, I could have gone out and done the you know with the first batch of research, gone out and done the news, the news broadcast, and go, this is it. This is what it is all about. And and I simply ignored the new research that came in. A lot of researchers do that. a lot of. When, when they talk about they go into airtime and you talk about these anchors reading the work that other researchers have done the anchor the anchors don't do the research on the news on a news desk uh, the people are now who are hosting the show don't do the research they have a team of researchers behind them 
and there's a certain deadline at a certain point in time, they, they cut off the research and say, we're going to go with this. It doesn't matter what the reality is or what comes after, comes after it. They go with that chunk of reality and say, this is the reality, this is what's going on, and there's nothing more going on outside of this. Well, that's not true. And you know that's not true because you see, you could go back to my vlogs here and see what's happening. I'm preparing to get my news vlog, the news uh, tweet line plus out. Oh, but wait a minute here. There's more research over. I just found some something new. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to do it. And you see it doesn't, it doesn't come out. And you see that there's delay after delay. But it's what? Why is there delay? I keep finding new material. I keep finding new aspects. And that's it. As you add your aspects together, as you get the different bits and pieces, you get a clearer and clearer picture. In many cases, you know, one I was thinking when I was first saying, oh, yeah, we're going to go with uh, Tweetline Plus. Tweetline Plus is a go. What I was thinking then and what I'm thinking now are two totally different things because what I've seen has fundamentally changed the way I think about things. And if I had simply gone with the initial, then I would have simply ignored all this change, all this new understanding, and it wouldn't have come out. And so this way, in many ways, this is an essential part of research, is the background stuff, the stuff that most people don't see. This is one of the most fundamental aspects of research. This is the most fundamental aspects of what you see as an end product from the research. And it does cause a lot of bizarre behavior. I mean, you, you, on, on camera, you could be fidgety. I mean, this is, you get on camera, it's like, your mind goes blank. The first thing, you know, you get on camera, it's like, ah! And you, everything that you were thinking about goes. So there's no conversation. There's, there's simply that blank stare and, hi. Right? That's all that's there. And I think also when you get on camera, your eye itches, your nose itches. Uh, I have a mustache and beard. That itches. Um, when you start talking, if you haven't been talking for a while, you start to yawn as, as the air exchanges within, within, within the lungs. As, you, as your lungs and, and, and respiratory system get up to speed with the, with the energy required and the breath required to speak. These are all factors. And the thing is, in most science shows, these behind-the-scenes factors that are very important in terms of understanding research, in terms of where you go. So this case is, is physio uh, physiology here. The physiology of, of human being, physiology of uh, fatigue, the physiology of being on camera, uh, because it does have an effect. And it, it just scratched right here. There was a little bit of an itch here. And as I scratched there, another itch popped up over here. I mean, this, this, you can't control how the physiology, the, the, you can't control the physiology, in many ways, <clears throat> you can't control the physiology of your own body in many cases. There are things that are going to occur that have will have results that are unexpected. And the thing is, if, if you are doing this type of research, you're going into open exploration research and you're doing research in a variety of areas, including uh, physiology, physiology and psychology, uh, mixed with organic chemistry, gives you a model of the human being. The model of the human beings becomes the model for cyber for cybernetics. So if you wonder how the, that put, sort of puts together, I'm doing astronomy, physics, and cybernetics. Well, cybernetics means uh, you have to model the human being. And that's your physiology, that's your organic chemistry for uh, the chemical reactions that go on, the biochemical reactions that go on in the body. Uh, and uh, then there's the, there's the, the uh, psychological component, too. And no one has to sort of patent down and say, oh, this is what psychology is. And so, as I've demonstrated before, you can see very clearly that, uh, that, that psychology, because we haven't gotten an answer to it, and in many cases you don't have answers, direct answers in psychology, that psychology is asymptotic. It does have that asymptotic, asymptotic behavior. So you can see it, it goes within, it goes within, or, uh, within uh, calculus, the fundamentals of calculus. It goes... Also, because of that, it fits with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, no matter how much your, your answer is, no matter how good your answer is, no matter how good your model is, it's always going to be an approximation of the reality. It's never going to be exactly is. And because you have that approximation, 
and not the actual thing, because, uh, because the actual thing is asymptotic, right? It exists only within the limit, and this is again calculus, sorry. <laughs> uh, you now have a component, the, psych the psychology now is a component of quantum physics, and you now have that connection there. And this connection is is I can demonstrate here. I can demonstrate the connection between psychology and quantum physics. And this provides a new direction that most psychologists haven't gone in quantum psychology. Most psychologists have not gone, they're staying within the classical sciences of Freud and, uh, and, uh, and Jung. This is where most psychologists are around. There are some derivatives of that. There are a number of derivatives uh, in psychology from uh, Freud and Jung. The most popular part is the most superficial, it's the one that understands the least. The one that is less common, and well, almost uncommon, uh, is the military aspect of psychology. This is, this is for people who know about MK Ultra. MK Ultra was, was there right from the beginning with Freud. But it never came out to the public like that. Where the public saw what was in standard psychology taught in the universities was not the MK Ultra track. It was a more called pop psychology track. It was more of uh, the therapeutic track, if you want to call it that. But the therapeutic track is very uh, is very superficial. It's not really anything at all. Uh, it's in many cases it's a pseudoscience because it's more about opinion than anything else. Uh, it is not observational. Uh, so, uh, most people, when they go to take psychology, they take a psych psychological course, have no understanding of what's actually going on. They're given specific terms. They don't really know how these terms came about. They haven't done any, of, and they're not going to be doing, most people more often that, they're not going to be doing the research to find out what's going on behind, because that thread is never really there enough for most people to say, ah, let me see that thread there. And they're not looking outside. They're not looking outside the box. They're not looking beyond what they're being told in school. You know, they're not going beyond the textbook. It's only when you start beginning to say, you start questioning the textbook, start beginning to question your authorities, that you can begin to go. You know, you look to the side, and you're supposed to be looking in front of you, right? You look to the side. What's that over there? You know, to start noticing the things that not everything is neat on the page. That there's stuff outside your textbook. It's not until you start noticing there's stuff outside your textbook that you start going, let me just take a little trek down there. But as soon as you start taking that little trek down to uh, uh, to the outside of the textbook, your professors are not going to be happy about that and you're going to be slapped back into in into uh, you know into line. And this is what they'll they'll grade, they'll downgrade your paper, so your papers will not get a good as mark as you know, and you might be expelled or suspended or put on academic probation or a whole variety of we'll call negative consequences for deviating from the standard path. But it's those students who are able to break away from the standard path completely. They're the ones who begin to go, oh, okay, there's something more, and follow that track uh, outside of uh, the standard knowledge and start looking at more advanced or alternative. We'll it can be called alternative knowledge, but it does lead to more advanced knowledge, but it also leads to some really... Uh, crazy places like uh, w once again believing that the earth is flat and there's a number of conspiracy groups out there who believe the earth is flat and they take this perspective because uh, well the government is lying to us everything is lies and so therefore the images and pictures from satellites are lies and so uh, the earth is flat there's no proof that the earth is round and that's their logic and they will create videos on YouTube have whole conferences convinced of the fact that the earth is flat and I think that, 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 you know, that you, 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 there, there's nothing you can say to them because they will dismiss anything that they don't accept as true. So that's what I'm saying is that simply going off into the inter alternative track does not get you towards uh, uh, advanced uh, advanced knowledge. It simply gets you off the as it gets you off the standard knowledge. Getting to the more advanced knowledge is, is a lot more complex than that because you have to find your way through this mess, the maze of of alternative knowledge to find 
the track that leads you towards more advanced knowledge. And that's not always an easy thing to do. It could take a couple of years to do that. So, uh, Anyways, I'm going to leave that here for now. Uh, I think our discussion is really good, good enough. So I'll leave this here for now. I will uh, come back uh, maybe about uh, a couple of hours and, and see what's going on. Maybe we'll go to bed. Maybe I'll stay up. Uh, I'm, I'm planning. I might be planning to go uh, do food shopping. I really don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory L's uh, BTS vlog. Alright, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.